حسبي ربي جل الله ما في قلبي غير الله نور محمد صلى الله لا إله إلا الله. I grew up in Australia. I wanted to study acting, and I went to university for that because uh, I really believe that we lack, as as Muslims, we lack. Uh, storytelling in cinema and television uh, about our rich history and so that's one thing that I really wanted to get that was my, my main uh, objective of getting into uh, television and cinema because there's absolutely if you can count how many uh, TV shows there are out there it, you know, explaining our history that you can only say about two or three, I, I, I would imagine, because we don't really produce anything. Is that right? You guys, are, you, are you following me? Yeah. So I got into uh, cinema, and it was, it was kind of like a, a, a mistake because I had no Muslim friends in there. It's really dangerous because uh, I didn't have a, a mentor, like a Muslim mentor, or any. It was, it's a dangerous uh, sector to get into. However, uh, I, I ended up going to Hollywood. I did a couple of films in Hollywood. I did a couple of TV shows. And then finally, when I was 28 years old, I was like, I need to get married because I really need to protect, protect myself because uh, females in Hollywood are everywhere and it's just it's not turning out right for me. Uh, so I went to Bosnia, where my father is from, and uh, I found a wife there. I got married, and I was going backwards and forwards between uh, Hollywood and Bosnia, and I got married, and then I ended up staying in Bosnia, and I was trying to figure out how I could make halal cinema or halal content about Muslims. And it's very hard to do that by myself. So I ended up going to Turkey, and where I found that under Recep Tayyip Erdogan, you guys know about Recep Tayyip Erdogan? You know, he's the president of Turkey. Okay. So, so uh, under, under him, uh, the national television started to make uh, pretty much Islamic content, which I was quite after that. And they were making like a Sherlock Holmes, uh, an Ottoman Sherlock Holmes, you know, so like a Muslim Sherlock Holmes going around and solving all these mysteries about all these Jahil people and stuff like that. So it was a really, a really good thing. And I, I acted on that show for about seven episodes. And then uh, I, I went and learned Turkish, by the way. I, I didn't know a word of Turkish when I arrived in Turkey. It took me a good year of studying uh, intensive classes on learning Turkish. <coughs> And I didn't believe I could learn it, but alhamdulillah, I, I learned it in about a year and a half. And, and then uh, I got an offer to go onto this TV show. It was about Ertuğrul Ghazi. And I had a meeting with the producer. And the, the producer came to me. So this is just to explain the sector there in Turkey. Uh, the producer asked me, he was like, uh, on our first meeting, he asked me, uh, he looked at me kind of weird, like untrustworthy sort of thing. And he was like, this is about Ertuğrul Ghazi. And I was like, okay, great. And I, was, and I, took, I started explaining to him all the history, what I knew about Ertuğrul Ghazi. So I knew, I know a bit, and because uh, I love my history. So, uh, And he was surprised. He was like, he was like, Allah, what? He, was, he couldn't believe it, you know. <laughs> and then uh, he asked me, am I okay with playing on such a with, with acting in such a series I was like absolutely of course I am mate. it's my, my kind of thing because majority of the actors in Turkey uh, they have a problem with that, that like going into that kind of con they don't want to be known for that kind of stuff so that, that's the actual situation of Turkey uh, but I alhamdulillah I got, I got the, the privilege to, to act on that show uh, I was originally supposed to be a, a baddie that was going to just kill everyone, and uh, it was really it was really hard for me because I would walk into a shop in Turkey and they'd be playing the show or something, and, and like people that knew the show in Turkey, and it's, it's really the practicing Muslims that watch this show in, in Turkey. 
So when, when I walk into a shop, they look at me and they'll be like, I'd be, like, on the show, I'd, I'd, I'd be like trying to kill Ibn Arabiya. And uh, these guys and the shopkeepers would be looking at me and they'd be like wanting to kill me. They wouldn't want to serve me. They didn't want, didn't want to talk to me. <laughs> it was like, and I had to convince them. I was like, it's only a TV show. <laughs> it's like, so that happened, that used to happen a lot. And later on, uh, you know, because of my good fighting skills, a lot of people liked me on the show and they were writing to the producers that, you know, you know, you should really make this guy Muslim. And I didn't think it was going to happen, but they, they, did, they did that. And the way they did that was, was uh, quite inspirational. It was, a, it was a, an amazing opportunity to play on that show. I've, after that show, I started doing a few other films in Turkey. And then I ended up moving to Bosnia. I still have I have my own TV show at the moment on in Turkey with the same channel. Uh, it's a documentary travel cultural show that we uh, we are trying to show about uh, you know uh, underprivileged privileged families that are living all around the world from Nepal, Pakistan, uh, or third world countries where they're doing like really crazy jobs. And what, what we do, we go and, I, I go and live with the family, I eat with the family, I work with the family, I sleep with the family, I sleep on the same, same kind of bed, or if they don't have a bed, I sleep on the concrete with them. And it's just, it just shows real life. And what, why that show, why we do that show is because uh, the Turkish government or the, the Turkish television network really want the Turkish people to appreciate what they have. So that's the main thing they, they want, and in that they want me to live with the family because they want a, a tighter family uh, structure in Turkey. Because if you have a strong family, you have a strong neighborhood, you have a strong society. So, alhamdulillah. Uh, just one question. Um, what was the sort of changing factor in your life, the catalyst that brought you closer to uh, your religion, or you went from sort of Hollywood to, we can say, Hollywood, or your deen? Hollywood. That's good one. <laughs> Hollywood to Hollywood. Okay, so, so, I, you know, I grew up as a practicing Muslim, you know, I, I used to go as a kid. We weren't part of the Tabli Jama, but we would attend, uh, you know, three-day Kharush in, in like one place in Melbourne or, or Sydney or something like that. We, we, would, we would be, you know, I learned so much on that. Uh, you know, I, I also went to a madrasa when I was in high school for, for one year. I used to go on Muslim camps. I would, I would say I was a proud Muslim and an and educated young Muslim in Australia being half Australian and my, my, my identity would be like, for you guys, I guess it'd be the equivalent of half Pakistani, half English, you know what I mean? So you, you're confused in your, it's confused with my identity. And uh, one thing that triggered that was I, I didn't know who I was. I had a Muslim name, Rashad. I was going to a Muslim school where, uh, I, I was going to a, a non-Muslim school, I mean, where there was like, I was the only Muslim in my year you know, you feel the pressure. So you look for your identity. I looked for my identity, and I found that in Islam. And uh, the best thing was just to, to focus on that. So I got into acting for that reason. You know, I really, I, I saw the film, the message, I must have seen it a billion times as a kid. Uh, every day after school, I'd be watching that film, and I knew every single line out of that film. I still know every single line out of that film. And I mean that—that that was like probably, you know, for, for for kids that don't read that many books, you know, television and cinema is the easiest way to to just converse with them, to just to teach them, and that that's what it did with me. I, I learned a lot of things about that. Uh, so what was the what was the question was. Uh, what was the main thing that the catalyst that that triggered me back into Islam? Uh, I went to Hollywood. I didn't have one Muslim friend around me for five years. There, it's a hard thing. You know, it's a it's a hard thing trying to 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 become successful so I can start doing Islamic content. It's just it's almost impossible. You know what I mean? Because you, I don't have a Muslim friend around me. You are who your friends are. So I decided I needed to get out of here. Uh, and it's the thing about Hollywood. It's it's dunya. It's the sweetest taste of dunya. Everyone loves the dunya. You know what I mean? And I ended up going to Bosnia for Ramadan. And there was one, one sheikh there. I remember after Fajr? 
uh, he was giving a small small dars after Fajr, five minute dars, and he was explaining how us Muslims, us Muslims, we really love the dunya so much. And I was thinking about all my friends about that in, in Hollywood, ones that own helicopters, sons of the biggest trust fund babies in the world, you know. And I, he said that we love, the Sheikh said, we love the dunya so much, like, like a, a dog that, a dog, a street dog that hasn't eaten for three days. He said, you give a bone to that dog, the dog's going to be just chewing the bone, holding onto the bone. He said, we love the dunya just like that dog loves the bone. Try to take the bone from the dog. <sighs> Try to take the dunya off the people. And I started thinking about everything, the watches I'm wearing, the, 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 the clothes, the cars, everything. I was just thinking, the lifestyle, man. I was like, I was, I was like, I've got to get out of here. I've got to get married. Bro. I've, got to, I've got to clean myself up. I can't, I can't hang with, I can't hang out with the people that I was hanging out with. So, you know, I, I, I just called it a spade a spade, and I was like, that's it. I'm done. I'm done. I, I made near it. You know, I, I really need to get married as soon as possible. Uh, it didn't matter hijab, no hijab. Didn't matter. I just need, need a, I need a wife. I, I, Hijab, ideally hijab, because hijab is like a protection, you know. When you have a hijab, a wife with a hijab, you cannot mix Hollywood. You uh, mentioned about your father, who grew up in um, former communist Yugoslavia. And if you know the history of Yugoslavia, many Muslims were martyred there for uh, not being allowed to freely practice their religion. And anyone who practices or practice their religion would be uh, locked away and tortured as well. So first, uh, British Muslim and uh, Muslims, and you've touched on this as well. How much is it of a blessing that we're able to freely practice our religion? Brothers, you, you, you have it like on a golden platter. You guys are so free compared to what they had. Uh, it is quite scary that that was only what, 50, 40, 50 years ago where you know, if you spoke out, if you spoke out, you, you, you would never be seen again, you know. And if you can look at now, at, at West China, it's, it's, it's a similar thing, exactly the same thing as what happened in former Yugoslavia. You know, I have my, my father's amajar, Amur, my father's Amur, uh, my father's uncle, he, he went missing, you know, never seen again. Uh, that's one of the things that, that made my, my father and my grandmother uh, want to migrate to Australia to get out, to get out of it, get away from it. So they got out, they, they migrated to Australia. Uh, Boston is a phenomenal place, Marshall Island has such a rich history. It's a beautiful place, it's full of beautiful mountains, forests, uh, there's rivers all over Bosnia. and. Uh, we have a lot of islands there. Alhamdulillah, after the last war, the, the Bosnians woke up and started practicing, were well, free to practice again, and that's been a, such a blessing. Now, if, you, if you guys get the chance to go to Bosnia, please come visit, please. It's, it's such a beautiful place. You guys living in England will, will be like so amazed that there's brothers and sisters out there who are Wahhafis, Alims, and have blonde hair, blue eyes, and you know, it's like. Be, really, you, you guys will really learn from that. Uh, brother, brother Muhammad Faraz does tours there. Please, if you, if you, really, if if he has a tour coming up, please come. Come visit me as well. I'm living there. My kids go to a Turkish school there, Turkish Muslim school there. Uh, just moving on briefly, uh, you've mentioned in the past about your mother that she was a rock of your the, your family and how she sort of brought you in, in, into the, back into the religion and. She may be very punctual in, in Islam. And this is mainly for the, our sisters listening at home as well. Uh, how much of an inspiration was your mother in your, in, in your uh, life? Are the sisters listening right now? They're listening at home, yes. Yeah, Marshall. Yeah. Okay, so my, my mother is everything to me. My mother, my mother and father, everything, absolutely everything. They, they work so hard for myself and my brothers. Uh, but my mother in particular, she, she is like one of a billion because uh, she, she came from a very, very... Uh, affluent family. My grand, her, her father was a barrister and became a judge in Australia. He was a very well-known man. He was a very fair man. And uh, she has 
seven brothers and sisters, and uh, she met my father, who was like a, a migrant, right? He's a migrant. My father's an immigrant to Australia, uh, not seen as someone that's that's kind of respectable. Although my father was, was very well dressed, you know, he was, you know, he was like a sir, you know, he was well dressed. But he, my father was a painter, a house painter. You know, he'd go around and paint houses and then he'd dress up and nice and go out. Uh, she, she met my father and my father didn't know much of, about Islam because of his, his background of communism. You, you were very limited. He knew he was a Muslim. He was ready to fight anyone because of that. He was ready. He, was, he, he, knew, he knew Al-Fatiha. He knew Shahada. <laughs> That's basically it. He didn't know anything else. And that's, that's, that's the limited amount of knowledge that these people were allowed. So, uh, my mother, um, after they got married, uh, my, my mother uh, wanted to take my brothers to, to like a, some sort of religion, to, to Catholicism, to, to a Catholic church, to Sunday school. And my father was like, no, no way. He was like, not happening. And uh, basically what happened was... Uh, my mother said, okay, then she started to research other religions. And all the answers, she went to a boarding school, a Catholic boarding school. So all the answers that she had that were unanswered, all, all, the, all the questions she had unanswered, uh, she found in the Quran. She was reading the Quran, she was reading the Quran, she was reading it. Just like it was just it became such a, a light thing for her, like just a, a nur, and just so, so beautiful for her. And she started taking the kids to uh, Madrasa in Canberra, in, in the capital, Australia's capital. And uh, eventually she, she wanted to become Muslim. And my father didn't know how to take it because he's, he's never seen anyone become Muslim before. So he was like, he was like I don't know what to do. It's like, it's like, and uh, my mother took Shahada and, and she was like, she started going to Madrasa as well and she started practicing and... Uh, my father would, my mother would come home and teach my father what she learned, and you know she would she would push him to go to the masjid. She was always pushing and pushing and pushing. She was she was telling him, you know, this is your religion. You need to do this. You know? and it, it was he needed that. He needed that push. And then he was like, that's it. Once he started, he was in love with it. He he stopped all the the, the bad things he was doing, and he just started going fudge. You know, started you know started more and more. And, you know, they, they had a beautiful life. Mashallah, my, my mother and father, they really, they, they had a really mixed community in Australia, so it's really good, you know. They, we got these people from, you know, Malaysia, because that's our, that's our neighbor there, Indonesia, Malaysia. You have all these uh, Indians, Pakistanis, everything, you have whatever you want. Turks, all the Arabs, so it's a, it's a, Africans, it's such a beautiful mix. Me and my wife, we love our coffee. And <laughs> he has love coffee. <laughs> we were hooked on the Eritrea and their organic coffee. And there's a lot of history behind coffee as well. The Muslims invented coffee as well. And uh, in the Haramain, it was forbidden for so many years. It was declared haram because it was uh, declared that it was an intoxicant. Then afterwards, it sort of became uh, halal. Uh, you still have your, uh, your, your coffee shop? In so I, I, I have a cafe, I have a couple of cafes, and I have a. Uh, a coffee roasters in Bosnia, and I import coffee and I give uh, like classes on coffee, and I train baristas, and uh, that's just like a, a passionate thing for me. Like that's I don't make money on that. It's just like I just love it, and I love coffee. I love trying different coffees. I love the history of coffee because the history of coffee actually, uh, if you look at the Muslim countries, all the Muslim countries will, will testify that it, coffee originated from Yemen. Yeah. All right, you know, one of the Harazi mountains or something like that. They say it comes from Yemen, and there are trees in in Yemen that that have been there for like thousands of years. Right? They just say that's like a thousand year old tree, coffee tree, and uh, the word uh, the best the best kind of coffee. There's four types of coffee. There's one I don't know the name of. It's like no one drinks it. There's there's Liberica that originates from Liberia. There's Robusta that originates from. It's not Uganda, but it's maybe somewhere, something like that. Uh, and it's, it's a weed, robusta, because it's robust, it's a weed. It's, it has double the caffeine. It's probably what most of the cafes, the cheaper cafes, serve. Uh, and there's Arabica, which originates from Arabia. 
And uh, if you Google where does Arabica, Arabica come from, you're going to have about 30 pages on Google saying that it comes from Ethiopia. But it doesn't really come from Ethiopia because uh, the people in Yemen were cultivating it 200 years before it was even discovered in Ethiopia. So it's, it's a bit of like propaganda there from the West that they're just trying to take away from the Muslims. Uh, and I think that's quite interesting. I think it's really interesting. And the best coffee in the world, the best Arabica in the world, is Yemeni. The most expensive Arabica in the world is Yemeni. Uh, let's change it. Uh, Sheikh, I have a question. Yeah, sorry. Young boys and girls who are doing media study at college, and they are thinking of going to university, and obviously in the 30 minute university, they have to choose the option. Either do journalism, or go to film industry, or do documentary. I mean, what is lacking for Muslims, and what would you advise these young people? I think, I th Sheikh, I think, I think it's all lacking. Like the, the, the entire, I mean, we need journalists to write about our Muslim films, to write about our Muslim actors, right? We, we, need, we need it all. We need the whole package. We, we don't have that, though. Unfortunately, we just don't have that. It can't, it can't be like a, a one-man show. I have no idea how Mustafa Akka did it all by himself. You know, the message, the line in the desert. I don't know how he did all that by himself. He, he got distribution all over the world. And unfortunately, I mean, that, that's where the ball dropped after that film, after those films. So there wasn't anything that really was, was good enough to write home about to, 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 after that in terms of Islamic content. But you're also saying that, okay, for young persons, they want to university now. Okay. And they chose an option. Okay. Like other journeys and going to make a documentary and so forth. Uh, but because sometimes, obviously, sometimes in the UK, they might not have five people who can support them, like you could say you found. So what would you say to go to a Muslim country and try and hear to people? Okay, I would, I would say if, if you have to go to a Muslim country, go to a Muslim country. But, but you also have enough population here. I mean, looking at... Looking at the results of Air Surul, the TV show, I mean, there's proof that there's a market for it. So I think we just need to create more content. And I think that's what's really lacking is creating the content, creating, creating the, uh, what I would say, like think tanks, you know, throwing the ideas up. Uh, I think let, like real lessons, like, like uh, training, like, we like that. And I think we also, above all, we lack mentorship. Uh, mentorship is one, one of the most important things because without a guide, you're not going to get there. You know? now, uh, no offense to, to, to imams or anything, I don't really believe an imam is going to be able to guide an actor, like, like tell them what to do and all that. Maybe they can, but maybe if, if they're really in touch with, with what's going on and then... I think that that's of great benefit because uh, you can't do it alone. I mean, I can't. I, I couldn't do it alone. I, I needed a mentor, and m most majority of my mentors were non-Muslims. Uh, it's like to get through university. You know, you, you, they, they tell you at university you need a mentor. You know, so like a guide. So you could be an open market to Muslims from UK, young boys and girls, as a mentor. Uh, you know, you know, I'd like to add to that. I think I think you should actually encourage your youth to to get into to, to films, cinema, acting. I think you need to encourage them. I know it's dangerous, but you need to encourage them as long as it's Islamic. You know, you got to keep it Islamic. Keep their values. Keep their morals. <laughs> Allah, 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 Allah,